Without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the mother of artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning master acrylic artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Uh, hi, this is Ginger Cook, and I thought I would do a really simple, easy to understand, insanely easy ways to mix certain colors in landscapes. Now, if the idea of mixing colors, the idea of just having to mix a bunch of colors, kind of makes you feel like our, our zombie pencil holder here, uh, Mark, um, I'm sorry, but I think we can maybe take the angst out of it. Uh, for, for one thing, uh, if, it will save you a lot of money. Here's why you want to know. It's going to save you a lot of money. When you learn how to mix some of these colors, it'll save you a lot of money without having to go out and buy a lot of colors. Um, look at the I card, and I'll show you the colors that I use mainly in all my videos. People always say, well, you put a list of colors, and but uh, basically these are the colors you're seeing here. Yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, dosmine purple, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, burnt umber, cad red medium, naphthal crimson, and titanium white. And sometimes we have burnt sienna, which you can mix it. You know, it's just sort of a cheap color because you can mix it. And so let's just take, let's just, and I have all these little different canvas sheets I'm going to show you. Whenever we have a painting, the, the, that we do a painting, there's leftover, can, you know, paint, paint. We just fill these sheets and I can use them as demonstrations, okay? So also, for, for, first thing I'm going to tell you is that recipe number one, it's really not a recipe, but it's something absolutely you can take to the bank on this, that whatever color you mix, it will look different on a light, it will look different on different colors of, of depending on the color next to it. In other words, if you put it, you know, blue next to an orange, it's going to look different than you put it next to a brown. So when you're trying to figure out the uh, canvas, if you will use, a, you know, the colors you want, if you'll use a, first off, use kind of a, a neutral gray. This is a canvas pad. It's neutral gray. It helps you to see it, or white. I'm, and I'd like to keep my uh, color mixing areas fairly clean. If I run, if this gets too messy, I'll just uh, get a new one. So I'm going to start off with just one of the things that people really have trouble with. Here's a here's an example of a painting that we have on our website, gingercooklive.gallery. And it was originally done, I like to bring back some of these old dead artist guys, and it was originally done in, you know, right around the turn of the century, 1900. But look at all the different greens. We have all these blue greens. We have sort of olive greens. So the first thing when you're trying to figure out, the second thing I would say is that when you're trying to figure out how to mix a color for a landscape. Decide whether you're looking at an olive green or is it a blue green. And if you're having trouble, now I understand some people you know, have certain areas of, you know, maybe they don't see colors as well as others, but that's probably the basic things you want to ask yourself. Is it, this is an olive green background. You see these are blue greens. So if you say, okay, I know that, for instance, so how would I get, for instance, this dark olive green? Well, first off, remember that this olive green is over a dark background, all right? Now let's just demonstrate how this might work. I'm going to take a second and put out these paint colors, and I'll get right back to you, and we'll show you that. Okay, so I've got a light green background and a dark brown background. I want to show you this is something to help you appreciate what the color is going to look like. Now, if I want an olive green, I'm going to start out with ultramarine blue and a little tiny bit of, of yellow, just a little bit of yellow. Now, see, look, I've got a nice olive green. Now, if I wanted it a little bit lighter, I would put some more yellow in it. I could even add a little yellow oxide because that would give me a little red in it. Now. Here's what you want to appreciate. So you almost you can kind of see these three shades I've got going similar to here, here, and here, even in this picture. But now, so I'll bring this down a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. But again, keep in mind that depending on what you put the green on, for instance, if I need this um, this green even more olive than this, I would have to add red. That is because red is opposite green. 
on the color wheel. Now, if you can remember this, red is opposite green on the color wheel, so if you need to tone down a green, make it less bright, so you would add a little bit of red. Now, I could yellow and blue make red, so if I added cad red medium to this color, a little tiny bit, just a little drop on the brush here, I add a little bit of that, maybe a little more yellow, a little more blue. Oops, that's phthalo. Let me just start again with that because I grabbed the wrong blue. This is why I like to put out the... Um, what an olive green, not a bright green. Now look, see, now I've got this really dark green. Now look here, I'm going to put it here on the brown. See that? I'm going to put it here on this brown. Now I want you to see what it looks like on the brown as opposed to what it looks like here. They really look like different colors, don't they? And let's even do a little bit where we put it on, say, orange, like this. Okay? So when you when you're thinking about how colors will change slightly over something darker now if i wanted that more olive i could add a little bit of purple to that because purple and a little bit more yellow and ultramarine blue purple is is red and blue so let me just show you this color now here we're back into the olive here like that now look how dark it looks here okay and then look how you know look at it here it's almost, it's really, really dark. Now, if we added, say, a little yellow oxide to that, a little bit more yellow oxide, let's just see what we would get. That brings it up a little bit lighter, but it's still very, very dark green. So depending on your colors, what, what your background color is, but still, if you want an olive color, you start with ultramarine blue, and then you start with, and I like a red, sh you know, red shade on that. If you're using Liquitex, everybody else is just ultramarine blue. And, you, and again, you can see now if I wanted to add to change that, wanted to lighten this up, let me show you what would happen if I added some white to this. Let's see, that's kind of dried up now. Let's just add a little bit of yellow, ultramarine blue, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more ultramarine blue. We're going to this purple color now. It's very interesting because now we've sort of lost the olive, haven't we? And now we're into almost a gray. Look at that, we almost went gray. Because the, when you start mixing equal amounts of, of colors together, like red and green together, you'll get a gray with white, all right? So again, I'm gonna show you what that looks like next to here, what this gray looks like next to here, and even next to here, okay? So depending on what you're coloring on, that will make a big difference. So if you could just remember those things, that will make a, a big difference when you're trying to, you know, match colors in a landscape, okay? So that that ought to be able to help. And then also, the third thing is, is acrylics dry darker. So when we dry these with, if we were to pause and dry these with a hair dryer, which I'm going to do now, see if you can notice the subtle changes in the color, okay? I'm going to do that right now. Look what happened to this color. That's because I used Dazneen Purple, and Dazneen Purple, when you add it to colors, has a tendency to almost have a little shine to it, too. All right, you can kind of see that. So those are the, that's how we're going to make an olive green. If I wanted to make a lighter olive green, I'm not going to add white. I'm going to just take the, the um, ultramarine blue and yellow. I would add just more yellow and perhaps a tiny bit of cad red medium to make it even more, then more yellow, okay? All right, like that. Now I'm going to just show you here. I want a little bit of lighter one, right? Okay, that's brighter. So it just depends. And see, this color looks brighter than it does here, doesn't it? It's the same color. Isn't that interesting? I mean, I just mentioned that because sometimes, depending on... All right, so this color looks so much brighter than it does here or here. So keep in mind that when it depends what you're putting it on. The background color you're putting it on will depend on how light or dark something is too. So that's an, you know another another really great tip on mixing colors. Now let's go into this color, these kind of blue blue green colors. Okay. So if I want more of a of a blue green, okay. So I'm going to move this down here like that. I'd start with phthalo blue and a little bit of yellow. Now I get this really, really bright green. And basically this golf course green is really something you, most of the time, unless you're talking about abstracts, most of the time you really don't want. Um, you won't see it in any kind of landscape color. This is like, 
when people do landscapes, you'll very rarely see this in a landscape. Let me just show you. Here's another landscape we have, and uh, that we've got another lesson on our website we have for landscape. It's similar to this, but what's happened to get this brighter color, I've added, a t you know, like less than 1% to the mixture, a little bit of cad um, red medium and a little more yellow, okay, and tone that down. Maybe even a little burnt umber will tone that color down. Now you see I have sort of a green, but it isn't that golf course green anymore. It's still a bright green, and it's still in what we would call blue greens. Now, though, so if we were to put this color... For instance, ooh, ooh. you just move this out of the way, okay? If we were to put this color on here, let me just show you what here. Here it is on here, okay? I'm going to just move this along, right? Here it is here under this one. Now, it looks a lot darker here than it does here, doesn't it? That's because we're going on to something dark as opposed to something light. We'll put it over here like that, and again, over the light, this green is going to look a lot darker. If we wanted to lighten it up, um, we could add more yellow to it, for sure. A lot more yellow, okay? And um, that, would, that would definitely lighten it up. I would still want to add a tiny bit of burnt umber to sort of tone it down. But I'm going to just show you. Here it is, it's lightening up. Now look how bright that looks there, as opposed to, say, here. Big difference, because what something's next to, so when you're mixing colors and you want to make these uh, landscape colors, keep in mind that depending on what where you're going to put it will show how bright it, something has to be. And the brighter the colors are, this is another one when you're talking about color mixing, the brighter the colors, generally the closer they are to you. If you want a duller color like that, you would just either add a little bit more brown to it, so it was just a... You know, let me just show you like that. A little bit more brown. See how that toned that down? And we'll just put it next to here. See how that just sort of toned those down? Just adding a touch of brown. Because brown really has red in it. Okay? So brown, like a burnt umber or raw umber, those are both colors that would help you tone down the green if it was too bright. Now, the thing about it is, is that while if we added some white to this, let me just show you. We added a little bit of white. Now, look at this. Now we're getting into our blue-greens. Do you see that? More of our blue-green colors, but again, look at that. That's more into these tones up in here, like that. Look at that. More into our blue-green colors. So I, these are just, it's in this color looks different uh, here than it does here, doesn't it? Let's just look and make sure I've got, you know, I'll just do, yeah, it does, looks different. Yeah, looks different. Yeah, see? totally this looks like a totally different color so don't be confused too much when you're mixing because when you go from here to your canvas and you're going well what happened I, I know I mixed the color I wanted and I put it on there it doesn't look the same at all well it depends on what you're putting it on so sometimes just making a little color chart like this with your background colors is a good way to help you understand how to make colors if I wanted this even more blue, gr blue green I could add a little more blue to this halo blue a little bit more white, like that. Okay, so I'm still into the blue-greens, like that. I'm going to just show you here. Again, pretty bright. Not so bright here. Not so bright here. A little bit brighter there, because we got a little bit of white in it. So sometimes you're thinking if you add white, it's going to lighten it up. It depends what you put it on. So now if I show you, come back here, and I show you this picture again, with our colors. Can you see now how you now know how to make the greens in this painting? All right? Well, you can kind of see it if you experiment with colors. So this is one of the things. This is how you'd make all the different greens in this landscape. And I don't know why we got something a little dark on there. I'll just take some paint and put that off. Okay, so, all right, I'm going to move this one out of the way now. And I, I think this is really an excellent thing to know. So one of the things also, you want to start off with a clean brush. I'm going to move these little out of the way. I'm going to talk about a different landscape here. I'm going to talk about this one. Because sometimes, you know, those are greens, but sometimes in a landscape, for instance, here's a, here's a wonderful landscape that was uh, in our wave and water class. And um, I love how we were doing the rocks. So again, I think I want a dark 
color here. Let's see if I've got another little dark canvas I can pull up. Yeah, let's, 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 just, let's just do a really nice dark canvas, and I'll show you. It's a dark purple. Here's an, and we'll do a lighter color, okay? We'll do a, again, we'll do the lighter color and the darker color, all right? Here's pink and, all right, so I'm gonna just move this out of the way like this, maybe. You can kind of, let's see, kind of move my palette out of the way a little bit like this and see if we can't talk about how to mix it, okay? So, if I want to mix this sort of bright, um, reddish brown color, and I'm not talking about, it. if I want to do that, all right? One of the things I can do is I can take cad red medium and a little Bosnian purple, and I can make a very nice kind of a rich dark brown. Do you see that? So if I put it on this little, you know, sort of this pink canvas, you can see what that looks like. And let me show you what happens when I put it over something purple. You just move these two together like that, maybe. Okay? So again, now, but I, I, I see in this picture that it's got to even be oranger. So what I would do is add more cad red medium to that. Maybe even a bit of yellow. Okay, just a little bit of the cad yellow medium. Okay, so okay, here we go. Now, that, all right, now let me show you on this dark here. Okay, so again, this looks different than this. Uh, notice how this, this color looks, looks different over those lighter color as a, you know, or, and the dark. See the two, same color but just depending on what you put it on. Now if I added some white to that, I want you to see how that changes this color. Now if I'm adding white, now I've got more of these peach colors. You see that in this rock? That's all we did, just added, added that. Now let me just, same thing here. Let's see, let's see, make it, there you go, see? Again, this looks brighter than this. You barely see it on the peach, all right? So if I needed this to be lighter on my peach, if I needed a lighter color, I was going over peach, I might have to even put more white in it to get it to, to show up, you know, kind of gray it even more. Now look at the difference, okay? Now that's really bright here. It almost looks white, though you, you know it isn't. So, you know, if you go to a paint store, with that, um, I'm not talking about an art store now, just somewhere like Benjamin Moore, somewhere they sell house paint, Oh, they've got all those different colors of white. This is how you do it. Okay, so you can see it's not quite white. It's sort of this, this almost flesh tone. See that? Almost a flesh tone color. Closer to probably my thumb, isn't it? And if I show you like that, let me just try this thumb. There. Well, my thumb's got paint on it, but maybe I can do it with a finger. Yeah, better. See? It's like the inside of a finger color. See, it's flesh tone. All right. So again, what what you're painting on in, in a landscape makes a little difference. Now, you'll notice in this landscape that we have some of this gray-green color up in here. You see that? So we have these gray-green cones, which are actually grayer than anything I showed you. And, well, they're really, if I'm going to show you both landscapes, I want to show you, it's almost, it's similar to this, but it's actually different. So I'm being, this is almost more of a yellow-green, and I don't have this color anywhere in this landscape, you know, I, I, that I see. I don't, don't have, I didn't put that color anywhere. Maybe a little bit on the roof. Slightly on the roof. So identifying your colors. Learn to identify your colors. Because if I need, if I need to make that color, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to start with yellow oxide and maybe a little of this brown color and add a tiny bit of ultramarine blue to it. Okay, and a little bit more yellow oxide. Okay, like that. Now I've got, I'm going to just show you, now I've got this gray green color here. All right. So I started off with this yellow oxide, these reddish brown colors, you know, and then, and if I add, let's see, I'll put that over here and I'll put that right here. So you can, oops, it's not mixed well enough. Here you go. Here's our color here. You just rinse the brush so we've got a good mixture on that. Okay. Put it right there so you can kind of see it. Again, it looks brighter here than here. Now let's put a little white with that. Now when we added white, we got away from, we certainly didn't, adding white didn't make it that color, did it? So if we wanted it lighter, we would have to add more yellow oxide. Now, in fact, I, I would just start again at this point. 
just start again so you've got your color and maybe I might add a tiny bit of, of, of yellow to it to lighten it up. You know what I mean? That might be a lighter highlight. And if that's too bright, I'd add a little tiny bit of cad red medium to it, like this. It's, you know, that could be a light highlight on a darker green like this. And again, if you put it over here, you see it's a different color. You put it over on the peach, peach color. So depending on I can't say this enough. Depending on where your color goes, it's going to make a big difference on um, on how you mix it and what it's going to look like. So it's going to might look different on one part of the canvas than another. Okay. So I mean, those are some. I think those are some really you know keen and I, and I think very valuable uh, color mixing uh, tips as far as you know being able to you know diff, you know and make, make your colors. Now one of the th colors that people have the hardest time with is gray. They just want to take black and white and make a gray. But for instance, in this color, let me move this little picture out of the way. In this, um, let me move this out of the way. Now in this, this painting here, I've got, I've got these rocks and I've got some, you see, there, there's, some, there, there's some gray on them, but there's no black in this picture. This looks slightly gray. Now we did mix some gray colors over here, as you'll recall. We did make something like that. Let me pause and get those. Okay, so, but we don't have anything like that, do we? Even though we did mix some sort of gray colors, this is about the closest that we got um, with that. It's about this, this color right here. So basically, one way you can make a gray, for instance, is let's take a little bit of white. We're going to start off with white, and we're going to take a little bit of Dosnian purple, make a purple color, and let's add yellow to it. Okay? Let's just add yellow to it. I'm going to show you. Here we go. got sort of a, you know, kind of a purple-gray color. Now if we wanted to add a touch of brown to that, right, just a little bit of brown, now look what happens. That's a little bit of burnt umber, same color. It tends to gray it a bit more, and if we add more white, like that, I'll show you what happens. Okay. So again, depending on what you are putting it on, this, this color looks a lot brighter here, even though these are the same colors against the green and the dark, all right? So if I wanted a gray, if I wanted more of a blue-gray, I might add a little ultramarine blue to that color, just a touch, maybe just a drop of that, right? Okay, and all I did was add a little more ultramarine blue. I'm going to show you the difference. And I'll put it right here next to it so you can see it. All right, this is more of a blue-gray color. Let's put a little bit more white with it. A little bit of this color. Mix it up a little bit more like that. There you go. So you can really see the color. All right, so that's slightly slightly darker. Graded even more. Depending on, remember, you can get a gray by mixing any opposites on the color wheel together with white. All right? So that's interesting in itself, isn't it? So you can do that. So let's talk about... Um, let's do that. Let's just take um, let's take blue. And let's take some yellow and and, and red, and make an orange. You know, cad red medium, and make an orange, and add it to the blue. It's almost made a green color, right? Right. A little bit of cad red medium, and let's start with some white, like this. All right. Now we're getting. This is almost a gray green color. Do you see it? Let me just show you right here, like that. Almost like a just oh well let's that changed in a minute I'll just do it this way okay a little more white okay I'm gonna just say a little bit more white in this like that now let's start here again there you can see it very similar to this color isn't it this light gray green color I have right here. So playing with your, you know, learning how to mix colors. Now, if I wanted to gray that even more, I could add a little brown to that. Okay, now look what happened. That's just burnt umber. Now look what happens. See, we grayed it even more. That's a type of gray. Now, if I wanted it more purple, I'm just, just going to show you. You can add a little purple to that. Again, you can play around with these colors, adding little tiny bits of each one. Now look what happens here. Look at how gray that one looks and how gray. That looks very, very gray, doesn't it? 
these look like very, you know, kind of gray colors. And those are the kinds of things you might uh, going to do for rocks if you're going to age some old wood. Um, I'll move this out of the way so you can kind of see this painting again. So you kind of age some old wood. Those are different ways to make um, to make grays. Do you see that? See the different grays? And if I hold it up right up here like this to your to your rocks, see the highlights on your rocks. So how would you make that? So these are when when you're uh, you know looking at making a landscape. We didn't have to buy a lot of colors. We didn't buy you know. 30 shades of gray, for instance, or those different boxes of colors, it's really not hard. It's like, for instance, when you first learn to cook, you ever got the cookbooks out and you followed each recipe completely? And, and one of the things I remember so fun was that when you um, filled up your cup of flour and then the, then, then the teacher had you scrape it off so it was exactly one cup. And now, you know, if you're making something, you just throw something here, a little bit of that, because you've done it enough where you kind of understand instinctively where your colors are going, all right? And, you know, I mean, not your colors, but where your food's going, you know, how to make the food. Well, you do the same thing with painting. You, you start to get intuitive about how to get these grays, whether you want a brown gray like this path, or see how this gray is out here on this... Um, you know, way out there on that, that uh, particular path way back there, you can definitely see it's a gray color. It's not white. And another way to get an interesting color, now we're going to take one last thing we're going to talk about, how to get colors in a landscape, okay? Sometimes you want almost, you have a color that's a little too bright, okay? And I'm going to move this out of the way now. A color that's a little too bright. And you like it, but you wish, you know, you put it on... Um, you put it on this, it was fine when you had it over here, but now you've got it on here, and it is just too bright. It was fine when it was on the light color, but you're looking at that going, I don't want to have to mix another color. What can I do? How can I resolve this color without, you know, mixing more colors? Well, I'm going to show you that. Hang on a second. I'm going to dry all these. One of the things you can do to tone down a color is to glaze over it, either with something called raw umber, which is a really quick fix. This is a color called raw umber. You don't see me use it that much, but this is a very quick fix. It's transparent, all right? So if you add a little bit of this color, it's called raw umber as opposed to burn umber, which is your opaque brown. So if you were to take a little bit, you know, a clean brush and um, a little bit of water, or you can, if you need it thinner, you can use glazing medium, just a little bit like that. I'm going to show you. It's our last thing, right? Let me show you here. I'm going to say glaze over this color, and I'm just going to add a little bit of water and add a little bit of raw umber right on top. And you see how I, maybe I should just do half of it so you can see how I see how I toned it down. Now you can have a little bit more, just tiny. This is called glazing when you add water or glazing medium, tone it down. I can kind of show you on this one, too. I'll just do half of it like this. Maybe this is, all, I still want it light, but this is, I don't want it quite that light. So raw umber is a really good one to use to glaze, you know, to change a color when in a landscape when it's too, when it's too bright and you need to tone it down. You don't want to mix another color. And also maybe you want almost this jewel tone of the, the light shining through it. It's very pretty, almost like a stained glass effect. Another interesting color to use when you're doing, uh, you know, Romber's one, also you can use the complement of the color. So I'm going to show you, here's a little glazing liquid by, um, by Golden. I'm going to put a, um, just a little tiny bit out somewhere. And I'm going to mix my purple in it like that, just purple. I'm not going to do anything else. I had a lot of purple on that brush, so I'll rinse it off. I don't need much of this purple, just a little bit, very thin. I'm going to show you taking purple... I can, maybe it'll show you up better on this one, like this. All right, there. A little bit of purple over something, you know, over its complement, like purple over yellow. Use the complementary color to push back a color if it's too bright, and you can glaze with that. So, you know, cause a little shadow or something, very thin little sort of out-of-focus shadow. It, it, it would work over this one, too, not as effectively, though, you see. But now, for instance... Um, if we did green over this, this is almost like a peach color, but if we did um, if we did a green glazing color, if we did made a little green, right, like this, 
and did a little bit of glazing liquid somewhere. Let's see if we can find it right like this. If I were to glaze over this with green, that would change this too, you see? So you can, sometimes you don't have to, to mix a color, sometimes you can just glaze over a color. And if I wanted it a little bit darker, let's just try a little bit darker color with that. So I wanted to darken that. So I wouldn't do a light green, I'd probably do a dark green. I could glaze over this with a dark green, but again, what happened? It sort of turned it, now it's interesting, it changed it, but I got a very interesting green just by using a glazing mix medium like that. But all right, so we sort of grayed that a little bit like that. So these are some of the things I wanted to share with you when you were, you know, learning to paint landscapes and you want to come up with all these different colors and you see a painting like this, and we, like I say, we have the step-by-step -step on our website. One of the things about being a member of Ginger Cook Live's Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting is that we do, new, our artists get new paintings every uh, week, and not everybody wants to paint landscapes. Not everybody wants to paint people. We do still lifes. We do all kinds of things. But I, And I show you step-by-step -step how to mix the colors. But even this information I think we did today will bring you a long ways into learning how to paint all these colors and how to just get different tones in your landscape. And I really hope that this was helpful for you guys. I appreciate your comments. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel on YouTube, we would really appreciate it and share this with others. Our, um, you know, we're, our goal, our mission really, our mission statement is to, sh to share acrylic painting and how to do it with others. And, I, and we do it in a lot of different ways, but I hope you enjoyed learning how to paint, how to find colors in a landscape and duplicate them, because I think these were insanely easy now that I've showed you using just these small colors, yellow oxide, cad yellow medium, gossamer purple, ultramarine blue, thalo blue, burnt umber, cad red medium, and naphtha crimson. And by the way, we didn't even use naphtha crimson, did we? I didn't even show you any of those colors. Maybe you'll need to experiment with those yourself, okay? and see what we're talking about. Naphtha crimson is your pure red on the color wheel, by the way, in case you're wondering why we got it out. It is your pure color red. So thanks for watching, you guys, and uh, we'll be back from vacation and, and live again um, uh, probably next week. And uh, hope you had fun learning how to mix colors.